Okay, so as I said before, we're gonna work today. We're gonna focus on the work that we have to do with surfaces and the ones that do surfaces is the workflow that creates you know, the um, mass instant surface and the uh, workflows that create you know, the LIDAR surface. You know, the LIDAR surface is a part of the master existing surface. However, it's creating a separate base file and so on. But before I, I dive into all CAD, I'm going to um, look at a bit of a sample of uh, what stuff, you know, how stuff works, you know, when it comes about workflows, when it comes about CLPD. So, if, you know, when I get to the point of creating dash shortcuts and that references, you'll understand the concept of what goes into the final master existing surface yeah so the way it was on this stuff you know i have uh, this sketch in here done and the way it was on this stuff you know you're going to receive a file from the server this one is going to might contain a surface file inside of it you want your surface in it now the tendency for here is for the people to come and take this file and say save as master file yeah so in here the master file when i come up on master file i'm going to make a comment in here uh if i do a q a comment when I say here master file, you know, the master file name is going to be a d dash v dash topo. Yeah? So that's the master file. So what I've seen, you know, in the past is like the people taking the data from the server and save it as this file. You know, and this one is, is, is not supposed to happen, yeah. Because you know, the idea is like you know, the master file is the same from beginning to the end, and it should contain all the surfaces that come from surveyors or you know, you know, maybe surfaces from other resources, yeah. So all these data should be assembled in this master file. So the way it was, you know, the way it would work, you know, for them to be assembled in the master file, it's that you can have component services, and those component web services, they're going to be managed via dash shortcuts and added via their reference into the master file. Yeah. So how it works is the following. The original service that you receive from the server, you know, from the server, you can have my container surface, you know, and I call this stuff you know, as version one or, you know, the first survey, and this one, when it comes about any you know, convention, you're going to take this file and you're going to save it in your project folder and you're going to call it as, I'm going to come in EQ and I'm going to make a few stuff. So this is going to be going to be a D dash V dash topo and then underscore zero one. So this should be the first surface, you know, that component, yeah. And maybe down the road, you're going to have maybe a second survey or second service from the consultant. This one might be maybe not the surface in it, but might contain, you know, triangles. So you have to build the surface. When you build the surface, this for you gonna be the second surface, and I'm gonna put it on top of it, and this is gonna be for you to be D dash V O underscore zero two. This is the second surface that you might receive. Yeah. So typically for for a um, project, you might have only one surface from the server, but as I seen, you know, across you know multiple projects, you're gonna have sometimes you know you're gonna have less surface, and then the project scope expands, and you might need extra surfaces and so on, or extra data. And the way it works, you know, for every surface that you need or every new component so that you receive, you're going to create, you know, a file, db topo 01 or db topo 02 and so on, sequential, you know, in that order. So in this one for me, this is another surface, it's going to be for me, it'll be a db topo, db topo 03. So all the surfaces that are going to be a db topo 01, 02, 03 and so on. Now this LIDAR surface that, you know, is taken care of today in the training, this one, it's a component surface. However, the file, this one is ID in, it's called, it's a V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-V-
And we're going to start in here to create the, by creating the file that we need for the master existing surface. And then I'm going to come here to browse templates. I'm going to go to the base files. And I'm going to go in the, you know, in the D section because it's a pretty file. And I'm going to look in here for the D project D toggle. This is the file template that you can use, or file C that you can use for the creation of the master existing surface. So I'm going to say open. I'm going to come in here, save. And ask you where you want to save it. And I'm going to save it in here to my project location. And this one is for us. It's in OneDrive, City of Boston. And I'm going to go here to CBS Projects. And I guess it's this Spicer Springs demo. CAD, reference files, DWG. And I'm going to take one of these ones from here to have as a sample, but it's going to be a D dash. And then it be SSRD, and this is going to be D dash token. Well, there, click save. Now, if I come in here to the tool space, you're going to see a couple of things in the prospector. You know, you see that we do not have a surface here. We don't have any surfaces in the SCAF file. This one is an empty file that's waiting for the data from other files, yeah, the other component files. And at this moment, if I look at the blue beam, let me see back to the blue beam. That's my blue beam. I'm going to go through the process of getting the data from this one in the master file. Yeah, so this is the original software with surface. I'm going to be that probably a data shortcut into the master file as a data reference. Yeah. So, to go for that one, we're going to look for the file that we received from the surveyor. So, I'm going to come in here, file open, and I'm going to go to the survey files received. So, I'm going to come in here to the source files received, surveyor, city of Asta, and I'm going to go in here and look for the file that is in the project B site. I'm going to come in here and open this file. Now, once this file is open, we're going to look for the surface in this file. So, I'm going to come in here to the tool space. And I'm looking here with the surfaces, this part of the topo. This is what it came from the server. We're going to take this file and create the component surface file for the first surface. Yeah, so here we're going to create the D project, the DB topo 01. So I'm going to come in here, take this file, and say file save as. Come on. Okay, file will be a save as. So take it from there. You take it as it is. I'm going to come in here to my CAD. Reference files, DWG. I'm going to take the twine in there and I'm going to take it here on the score and put an underscore zero one. So this would be the topo zero one. This is the first component of the master D topo. Now, in here, I'm going to go to the tool space and go through the process of renaming this one to match the desired naming convention in the master file. This is the first component surface. I'm going to go to surface properties and take this one and name it as the way it's supposed to be. It's going to be SSRD. And this would be V topo, and this is going to be underscore zero one. So this would be the first surface of the ESSRV project. So I'm going to click OK. Then the next step in here, I'm going to say save, control S. The next step in here for us, it will be to go, let me close that one. I'm going to go here and it will be to create the data shortcut. So we have the surface, we name it the way we want it. It's in this base file, and we create a data shortcut for that surface to be brought in, in the master file. So I'm going to come in here to tool space. I'm going to go to prospector. In the bottom here to the data shortcuts, send the working folder to the project folder. So right click on here, send working folder. And I'm going to come in here to OneDrive City of Austin. I'm going to go to the CES projects, find the project, select here the CAD folder. So select the folder. Now once that folder is selected, you're going to see there's nothing here at this moment because we do not have any data shortcuts for any CLTB objects. So the first one we start with, it will be the VTO opposite of one surface. So once this one is set up, we we'll go here to the manage up on the top and create the shortcuts. And then from here, you can select you know, the SID VTO opposite one and click OK. Now this surface, it's data shortcutted. So at this moment, we are in, in this workflow, we are at this step. So pretty much this surface at this moment has a data shortcut for it. Yeah? So the next step will be to create, you know, create this surface as a data reference in the master existing file, yeah, in the DB topo. So I'm going to come in here to the D topo, the SSI DB topo, and I'm going to delete this circle because I don't need that one. And I'm going to go to two spaces. And to get the data reference, you're going to go to the data shortcuts folder right in here, go to surfaces, select the surface, right click, create a reference. When I create a reference, you can see that you know everything is already predefined in here. We like see you know, the you know the name, it's already defined, the star CO default. Now the CO default, you know, is the star which doesn't show anything, it's pretty much is an empty style, pretty much it, everything is hidden. 
If you want to see like that surface, I'm going to come in here and change it. For now, for our purposes, just temporary, I'm going to change it to existing contours and click OK. So we're coming here to the zoom extent. You're going to see the surface, we have it in the catalog. Yeah, it's right in here. Yeah, however, this surface is just a component of the master. And at this moment, if you go in here, you're going to see that we have only a surface that's via data shortcuts in this cat file. Yeah? So we have the surface. We're going to create the next step to be to create the master existing surface object. So I'm going to the tool spaces, right click on surfaces. You can go up on the top here in the ribbon, say surfaces, create surface. And this one for us, we're going to call it as master, pretty much the master surface, going to be at SSRD, and bigger BD underscore BA underscore total. So this one, I want, you know, what's inside of that one, it would be SSRD is a project name. This says like, you know, this, you know, this surface has survey services and LiDAR surfaces inside of it. So it's a com composite or combined surface of multiple type of surfaces. Now here, you're going to see the style, we're change it from CO default, we're going to change it to CO existing and click OK. And then if you want, you can give you a description here, this would be like, you know, for the master existing surface. And click OK. At this moment, the surface is created. However, this master surface, it's empty. There's nothing in it, you know? So I'm going to do it here. I'm going to go to this surface. Maybe we're going to leave it like for now and this is nice stuff. What I'm going to do, we're going to do the following. We're going to take this surface and paste it inside of the master surface, this component surface. So it'll be not for you to paste it. This surface, as I said before, has to be inside of the CAD file. And it can be it's inside of the CAD file via a data sugar from data reference. This is the icon here in the left corner. So I'm going to go to, you know, take this SRDVD top, expand the definition tab. And then here, you're going to go to edit, right click. I'm going to say here from the bottom, I'm going to say paste surface. And then in the paste surface, you're going to select which surface you want to paste. Of course, it's the first component, the top of zero one. Click OK. Now, at this moment, we paste them together. You're going to see that two surfaces on top of each other. One of them is the component, and the other one is the master. If I select you know, one of them, you're going to see up on the top right corner here, look, here, 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 look on the top right corner, you're going to see which surface shows us. So this one I selected is the master. The one below is the component. For us, you know, we just need one to, sh to show only one set of countries, you know, so because of that one, we're going to take the component surface, it's either you freeze the component surface, like for example, you know, you're going to go and just, you know, freeze the layer of the component surface is placed on, or you can also freeze and turn off, you know, pretty much change the style of the surface, the component surface to not displace because you want just one set of countries, yeah. So I'm going to come in here, select the, the surface, the subdivide top positive one, right click, surface properties, I'm going to change the styling here from existing cartoons to COAD default. Yeah. And click OK. And now we're going to see only one set of cameras. Yeah. At this moment, you would think that everything is good to go. So pretty much I have already the master existing surface. I can go and what I'm going to do pretty much from here, if I go to the PDF, you have to take this one and create a data shortcut to be used somewhere else. Yeah, so from here, you will have to create a data shortcut for this surface to be used in any other place where you need the master existing surface. So the step in here for us would be to go to manage, with dash shortcut. So first of all, make sure that you know the dash shortcut folder is selected in here. It's the SSRD. I'm going to go to manage, create dash shortcuts, and I'm going to add this one to the dash shortcuts. Yeah. So up to this point, you know the pretty much the workflow should be completed. You know, it's however the complete the, the pretty much the the work the work was completed. You know without, you know, like any other services. Yeah, so you're going to still require for a workflow to add, you know, the master LIDAR surface, the existence LIDAR surface, and we're going to go for that one in the next step. However, when it comes about, like, you know, the, you know, one other part of the workflow is going to be, like, for example, to label the contours. And to label the contours, you have in here, going to go for this is the labeling. I'm going to say annotate. You're going to have in here the options for add labels up on the top left corner. Go in the drop down. This is surface. And then for the contours, you're going to have the option to either contour single, contours multiple, or contour multiple and interval. Yeah. If it's a contour single, typically this is what we use by default. Where we label each individual contours as we need versus you know, all the contours. If you click on this one, I'm going to say add. I'm going to say here the surface. I'm going to say the surface. And then just go ahead and place a label. Typically, I'm going to place the label on the major contour. You know, I'm not going to label, you know, or maybe major contour. And the contours that matter, you know, like for your design purpose. Do not put labels 
on all the contours you know, because there's no there's no need for them now. Yeah. So in here I'm gonna come in here label you know the major contour fiber. You can see if it says 665. If you have a hard you know if you have a hard time you know distinguishing which one is the you know the the minor and major contours, you can see if that's a different shade in between the two of them. But you know if you really want to see the major you know the major and minor contours, you can go to the home tab, letter manager, in the manager go to the section of let's see in here just to make sure. I'm going to go to the AD server style. And if I go here to display the contours that are placed in the main bit of a major, bit of a minor. So I'm going to come in here, find you know, the B section and find the bit of a major. And then in here, I can change the color from 253. I can change to any other color I want. You know, so I'm going to say here, maybe the major, I'm going to change to yellow. For us, the color doesn't matter too much because we use plus styles. So unless you know you use a plus style that prints color, it doesn't affect you. know, pretty much you can use any color as you need. Yeah? So right now, if we're here, you're going to see that the major comes by yellow, the minor comes by still keep the gray one. So it's easy for you to identify the major comes by supposed to be labeled. Yeah. So in here, this is like the first type of label to use. You know, this would be the country single. If you want to, you can use the country's multiple. And this stuff, you're going to say add. And the way this one works, you're going to select it in the surface. And then you're going to select, you know, from which point you want to start and which point you want to end. Yeah, so for example, I'm going to start here. You can see that it has labels for all the contours, you know, on that one. So you can get this, you know, label. You can see that, you know, shows up the line behind. And you can take this line and move it along to much label more contours, yeah. Now, as I said before, like, you know, here you can see that it adds, you know, every label, for example, major and minor, you know. Now, if you want to just start to label only the majors, you can always have the option here to drop the minor contour style to none. You can say add. So when I come in here, add another label. Let's say I'm going to come in here and select, you know, the surface. And add the label from here to here. You can see that the label is only in the major contours, yeah. Because when I added the label, we're gonna set it up, you know, for the minor contour label start to not be displayed or not to be used. Yeah. So you can use that one. Or another option would be for you to use if I say contours existing uh, minor, whatever. I come in here, could be contours multiple or interval. If you come if you click on this uh, box in here. You can see maybe the interval is 200 feet. So if you imagine we add, you know, if you want to label the, the, the surface, every 200 feet, you know, we can't label, you can select, you know, that one. I'm not going to go through this process because, you know, it might take a long time and, and uh, that's outside outside of our, you know, training here. But, you know, the options to label, typically the one I said before, I'm labeling it to be using the um, uh, country single. That's typically the one I'm using and I'm very selective in where I put the labels. Yeah, so put the label, you know, as we might, you know, just add the labels as that required, you know, for the 20 scale, because we need the labels for the other scale. Add the labels at 20 scale and consisting with your design, yeah. At this moment, I just added a couple of labels to have, to have an idea, but as we go along with the production part, so on, we're going to add more labels and, you know, we're going to look at, you know, where to place those labels in specific, yeah. So this is about the labeling. It's very easy. Just use you know the right tools for labeling on it. Now, at this moment, we are done with in a way with this workflow. However, the, this workflow it's also it uses uses the ladder component from the first pretty much from the ladder. Yeah, so the ladder component because the idea is like here the surface might not cover all the extents of your sheet. You know, so because of this one, you will have to generate you a ladder surface component that's added to the master existing surface. And that one is part of the other workflow. That's the A3 degree workflow. Yeah. So, any questions up to up to this point, point, or we can go to the next workflow. Questions? Did I make it easy? So, as I said before, like if you look at the PDF for it, kind of get an idea how stuff works. Yeah, so pretty much everything is assembled in the master file. And the master file need component surfaces, and one of this one is the one from the surveyor. And for the next work, we're going to work on this surface. You know, this is pretty much the other surface. We're going to be added, you know, the shortcuts in the master this master file, and going to be complementing the exist master existing surface in the areas we do, where we do not have survey. So, okay. If there are no questions, we can proceed to the next workflow. Yeah. The next workflow we're gonna pretty much generate the data that's required by the first workflow. Yes, yeah, so in a way, maybe should I have like maybe the LiDAR workflow first to have this one, but 
regard like uh, regardless of uh, if you have or not surveyed this this base file still has to be created you know so for example at this moment let's say if you if you use a field to finish you know um, let's say workflow in Africa, where you use like a field engineering workflow where you don't have a survey yeah on that one you're going to use the LIDAR surface you know so this one is not going to be your master surface file this one is going to still be created however the data are going to be brought in the yeah, data should pass to the master this is the master file whether you have or not you know survey and they are going to be brought in the master file you're going to have this component and you're going to still create you know this surface whether you not have you know like a survey because a survey because at the end, you know, maybe you might get survey in, in you know, like some down, the, down, let's say 60% or 90%, you never know. And at that moment, you should be ready to have, you know, the same data all the time, you know, across, you know, any project that what you have in a survey, you know, that this, um, this base file gonna be created and contain, you know, the surface that you have and, you know, gonna get to, you know, the other component surfaces. So let's go through the process of creating our, uh, like that surface for this project, yeah. So I'm gonna come in here to the save. I'm gonna save this file at this moment, and I'm gonna go and create, you know, the lidar surface uh, for the project. So I'm gonna go to the start menu. Let's go. Come on. I don't want that one. Sometimes I do this. Okay. Go. Okay. So we start. We go new. We go to browse templates. Your base files in the base file, it's a D. I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna use, for example, I'm gonna use the same D project B topo. So use you know the same um, let's say the same uh, template. And I'm gonna go in here and I say save. And I'm gonna go in here and take you know this B topo 01. We're gonna call it D topo 01 because the idea to here is like you know might have like different versions or maybe you might want to have different versions of the live that surface that you use you know you might want to have one for design you might have one to have one for you know for um let's say display you know for um, um maybe for like a overview sheet and so on yeah so because of that one when it comes about the design you might use you know a five by five foot view from the lidar when it comes up all like data for only for graphics purposes, like on overview sheet, you might need it, maybe you might use in a 25 by 25 foot video you know, for sampling, yeah. And everything is based on sampling. So I'm gonna come in here and save. And on this file, you know, I can come in here to this one. And I'm gonna come in here and attach you know any reference data. So pretty much if you, if you remember, maybe we're gonna come in here and say xref. And I'm gonna go here attach to WG. And I'm gonna to go to my project. I'm going to see a Boston project in here. I'm going to go to Spice Springs, CAD reference files, DWG, and selecting here. Let's see which one we need. So maybe we're gonna need in here the B topo, that one, and then the B side and the B side. Go now overlay. And zoom extend. So up here is the following. We have the data from grid, right in here. We have the data from the survey. Pretty much you can see the data from the survey. You have the data from the survey. Now what happens when you create you know, the LIDAR surface? The LIDAR surface is created in grid, yeah? So because it's created in grid, that means you know, the data are gonna be generated here. You're gonna have to align you know, this data to the, into the grid, yeah? You know, for, this, for the purpose of this base volume. Yeah. Now, of course, you know, if the data is kept from a century, you don't have to worry about it, you know, but Always pay attention. So if I come here to geolocation and go to map aerial or map hybrid, you're gonna figure out you know which there is a grid and which one is not grid. Yeah. So this is grid for us, you know, and this is surface. So you may see like in here, if I could bring the area, you're gonna see that you know this there are you know connecting here with the lines the right way. How this one doesn't align yeah. And because this file is a grid file, so the VA topo is a grid file versus the V topo 01 and the mass resistance surface, that they are surface files. So the way this one works in here, for my purpose, if I want to align the data, I'm going to go and look at, you know, the, I'm going to go map in here, map off. And I'm going to look at where's my uh, text in here. So it tells me, like, you know, to, be, to go from grid to ground. I use the scale factor. Now I need to go, to go back to the grid. I'll have to use the inverse of this factor. Yeah? So if I come in here, I'm going to select in here the properties, that base file. I'm going to go to properties. 
And I'm going to say here for the insertion point, I'm going to put in on the inverse, so it will be 0.99989. And then 0.99989. And the data should be moving. Properties. Four nine 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 eight nine. It should be the inverse scale factor. I don't know why this one. Zero point nine 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 eight nine. Too many nine eight nine. And then point nine 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 eight nine. Uh, oh, the decision point. I'm in wrong place, of course. So I'm, why it doesn't work? So this decision point should both should always be zero. The scale factor. So I'm gonna say the two of them. So I say point nine 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 eight nine, and then for the y point nine 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 eight nine, and the data should go and align with the larger, yeah. So pretty much at this moment, we have all the data in green. So now we're gonna worry, now we're gonna focus on the getting the data that pretty much now we're gonna get into you know, the surface that outlines the same stuff as the DA side. Yeah, so we're gonna take you know this green line and gonna use it you know as our surface boundary for the larger. Yeah. You can trace it you know or you can copy it you know from the other base file. You know so we're gonna come in here I'm gonna say the this time I say open XREF. Now this should, this should open you know, the VA site. When you think about the VA site, the VA site is a LiDAR file. Now the VA site is in the coordinates. So it means if I take you know, this outline, I'm going to say here copy 00, zero and I'm going to go here to my VA topo 01 and paste it and come in the same exact location. So I'm going to come in here, paste 00, zero because it's grid to grid and there you go. So I'm going to go here to external references and I'm going to go and unload all the data. So at this moment, we know that we need all the grid or all the LiDAR data for this location right here. Yeah. So I'm going to see here save for now. And I'm going to go to the next step. The next step is like, you know, in order for you to use the LiDAR data or to bring the LiDAR data, you need to know which quads or which grids are covered by this outline. So I'm going to go here to Express. I'm going to attach a grid file. And the grid file for us, it's uh, the grid, parametric file. So I'm going to go here to Andras Yevasen, ATXCAD. I'm going to go to data sets, grid, and be the grid elevation. That's the one you're using, yeah? So it's grid for the elevation there. Click open. You don't have to worry about like in the scale here because it's one to one, it's grid to grid. So click overlay. I'm going to tell you, like, based on this stuff, you can, based on the location of this project, you're going to need the Jollyville Southeast D3, Jollyville Southeast D4, and Austin West Northeast B2. Yeah. So I'm going to go in here and look for the data for those uh, for those quads. So I'm going to go to the Wonder City of Austin, ATX CAD data sets. I'm going to go to the elevation. I'm going to go to the 2021 elevation point. I'm going to work with XYZ data. Yeah? So pretty much, you know, it takes five as you know, the X, the Y, and the Z data. Pretty much the point data we sampled on a grid. So I'm going to X, Y, Z, and you have the option for the five or the ten. Now, typically, the five one is you know it's more accurate on the stuff because the sample every five feet. But for our purposes, you know, to keep it like you know lighter, I'm going to use the ten. But you're always welcome to use the five for like a smaller part and so on. So depending how much you know, like because you know, also it's all about like data management, like how you manage the data. And if you use like you know like a higher sample data, you're going to the data going to move slower. If you feel that you're going to need the five later, it's always easy to update the data. But first, you're going to focus on the one that you typically use, you can use the 10. So I'm going to the 10 and find the, the quadrant that I mentioned, you know, via the outline. So we did uh, Aston, uh, which is the bottom one, Aston West, Northeast B2, Aston West, Northeast B2, right there. So there's a CSV file. So I take that file. And then the Jollyville Southeast D3 and D4. So take that one. Jollyville Southeast D2, D3 and D4. So this and this. So I have like that one, that one, and that one. I'm going to take all these ones. I'm going to say copy them. I'm going to go to the Wanderer City of Austin. I'm going to go to the CBS projects 
go to my demo, reference files, GIS, DM. I'm going to paste them in here. So this is the DM source data that I'm going to use for the project. Yeah. That are going to be copied. And I said, like, do not attach it or do not map the data to the, you know, to the ATX cap because, you know, you never know when the data gets updated, you know, you're going to get a new version of data. And if the project, you know, lasts two, three years, you know, you want to make sure that, you know, you have a copy or, you know, you're going to start with the data that you need for your project. It's going to be the data that's at the time when you start the project. Yeah. If you want to update this on later, but it's good, you know, so, you, but, you know, just make sure that you copy the data that you need for the project in the new project folder. Now I have the, the three quads that I mentioned here. I'm going to go back to references, take the grid elevation, and see if you detach it because I'm done with it. So save it this moment. And I'm going to create the next one. The next step is to be to create the surface for the LIDAR. And the surface for the LIDAR is going to be like, you know, we have this follow already, be 2011. So we're creating here the surface LIDAR. So I'm going to go to the tool space. I'm going to surfaces, right click on this one. You see, create a surface. You see, there's another way to create a surface. Of course, you can always go here to surfaces, create a surface. I show you how to do that one in the, in the previous um, workflow. I'm going to come here and do it another way. I'm going to right click on the surfaces, create a surface in the same exact command for two different places. And we're going to give the name as SRB BA Topo 01. So this will be like the like that, you know, the first component surface, you know. And on this one, I'm going to come here, I'm going to take it, you know, this would be like, you know, uh, surface sampled on 10 by 10 grid. There you go. You can change it to here to see your default. You can change it temporary for us, you know, we we'll change it to with these encounters. That's fine. And click OK. Now, this surface, if I go with the definition, it's pretty much it's, it's a it's a surface created, but it's empty at this moment. You know, so we're gonna need to add data to you know. So in order for you add, you know, not for us to add that data to it, you know, gonna add the data they store outside, you know, in the CSV file. So pretty much you know the CSV file, but you know it's a text file that has the X, Y, Z for the point. Yeah. So now if I if I would go right to add the point files right here, we're gonna say add point files, you know, that to be is one of the steps, you know. If I have to go and add the point files, you know, from the three quads, you know, create a surface from all those three quads, you know, and the idea is like, here, we do not want to bring all the point data. We just want to bring only the point data that's based on this outline, yeah? So much you want to create the surface, you want to tell the surface to create the surface all from those files, from those three CSV files, only for the points that fall inside of this outline. And to do that one, we have to do a step before we add in the points, you know, and the step for us will be to create a Query area like a like a query clip, you know, a data clip. Yeah. So CLPD has an option that you can create a boundary that clips the data before it gets added to the CLPD surface, you know, and speeds up the process of you know trimming the area that's not needed. So from the surface, once the surface created, you're gonna go to boundaries, right click and say add. I'm gonna come here to the name, you're not gonna give the name of data clip. You, you know, you can give it you know any name as long as it makes sense for you. And then the name in here, data clip, and then the type in here, we're changing it from the outer, we're going to change it to data clip. So pretty much in the CLPD, use this surface to clip the data before you add it to the surface. I'm going to come in here, click OK. And I see that, you know, I'm going to ask you to select the object. I'm going to say here, select you know, the object, I'm going to select this surface. So it says like the surface data clip is not valid, polygon not closed, the process itself. Yeah. So I'm going to come in here and you're gonna have to fix it. You know, sometimes you have that one. I'm gonna go to properties, or maybe some stuff I say here goes no. We have to figure out where it crosses itself. Yeah. I mean, I would have to better figure out how, where is that one. Maybe the fastest way, you know, if that one happens for you, you know, if you don't want to 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 um, uh, let me see how many grips he has. He has lots of grips. You know, I could go through this one forever. Uh, maybe the faster way for you to be to trace the surface and make sure when it's closed, you know, because you know it's like it's, for this surface, it looks like there's a single place where this surface, um, where this polyline, it crosses itself. You might, you know, it's not closed, but when it when it's closed, you know, it crosses itself, and you cannot um, add a boundary to some 3D that closes on itself. So let me see if I can track track that one for us. You know, say yes. And I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna see. Uh, let me see here. Pretty much, you can go from here. You can go through each of the vertexes and see the vertex that doesn't have like. Um, Pretty much, you know, a remove vertex on the bottom. So, so remove vertex. 
I mean, King of East to all these ones. And typically might be one of the corners ones. Let's see, maybe this is the corners ones. Remove, remove, that one is good. Remove, uh, otherwise there always the option for you to track and trace the surface. Rather, so when it crosses itself, that's the location because you see if I, if I go to this, you know, corner has a remove vertex. If I go to this corner in here, it does have a, it does have a remove vertex. That means that two vertices on top of each other. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to go and delete one of the vertices. So I'm going to go here and I say, uh, maybe I'm going to use uh, polyline edit. And I say here, edit vertex. You can see that it shows up in the one that's, you know, the closest stuff. I'm going to say here, move. I'm going to move it somewhere. So it's like, you know, we have two vertices on top of each other. So once you move, you don't want the first one. I'm going to come in here and say, move the vertex. And you should have a close polyline that doesn't have overlapping vertices. I'm going to say control save. And go back to the tool space, right click, add. And I'm going to show you the data clip. And I'm going to show you the data clip. Click OK. Select the boundary. And we have success because the boundary gets added to the definition. It shows up in the list of the atoms added to the surface. So once the boundary is added, we can go to the next step of adding the point data. So I'm going to go here to the point groups or point class, sorry, right click and add. I'm going to go here to plus and look for the data. So I'm going to come in here for my Wonder CA Boston CDS projects. Look at the project. I'm going to go to CAD. We're going to go to reference files, GIS, DM. Select, you know, the three quads or CSV files, click open. Now, one those, one those files that are added, you're going to have to make sure that they are set up. So pretty much be the first step to add them. The next step it will be for you to define, you know, which is the format that you use by, you know, for, you know, for uh, which is the format that some TV should use to process the data when it adds it to the CAD file. And the one we have in here is going to use the COXYZ. So when you say select the COXYZ, you're going to see that, you know, it starts with the X, the Y, and the Z value. Now, once the one is selected, you can make sure there's nothing checked in here, and then click OK. Now, what happens in the background? So, we're going to go through those CSV, CSV files and going to just add the point that I've inside of that, uh, of that, um, poly, of that you know, polygon. Yeah? So, I come in here. You can see that, you know, I have my self, in my self the surface is updated and has all this data right in here. It's only the data that's inside of my polygon. Of course, it doesn't follow to a T, you know, the data. I might be able to add, you know, this one again as a boundary to trim it. Let me see, can I add it again as a boundary? You never know. I'm going to go here, add. I'm going to say here, I'm going to add it as a trim. Okay, an outer. I'm going to say add that same boundary twice. Can I do it? Yes, can I do it? So there you go. So pretty much I add the same boundary first as directly to be good the data that I need. Then I add the same the same boundary again as uh, trimming. You know, pretty much because sometimes when you add the data, it adds, you know, sometimes depending on the, on the triangles, it adds more data than I need. You know. So I'm going to just clear up a little bit more. Now at this moment, I'm going to come in here and going to save. One other step that I do in here at this moment, I'm going to also create a snapshot of the surface so because it is like you know, if I lose you know the original data at least you know this surface I don't have to rebuild it because at this moment you know it requires you for you so if I come here to the surface properties it requires for you to have this there you know like this this point files if you are missing these point files and the surface gets out of date you're gonna say like you know hey I want to build it but I don't have the source data and because of that one I'm making a snapshot so pretty much why it does a snapshot it's more or less like it creates a status of the surface at the time when it was created. So if you lose, you know, the source data, it still maintains the surface, you know, it doesn't break the surface. So I'm going to the VA 2.01. I'm going to say here, create a snapshot. If I come here to surface properties, you're going to see in the bottom that I add a boundary, the data clip. I import it in point data, the point files. Then I add the boundary again, and I create a snapshot. Here. So people OK. And I'm going to say here, save. Now, if I go back to my PDF, you can see that at this moment we have the file, we have the surface created, so we're going to go through the step of adding this surface to the master existing file yeah, as a data reference. In order for you to you know, add that surface, you have to create a data shortcut, and then once the data shortcut is created, you click, you're going to create a um, data reference of that surface that you're going to paste in the master existing surface. So to you not know, to do that one, Two space, make sure that on the bottom the dash request folder is set up to the right one. It's already set up to the right one. 
I'm going to my git of 0.01. Uh, I have the right name, just to make sure before I just say I have the right name. So I'm going to go here to manage, create that shortcut, select the git of 0.01, click OK. And at this moment, I'm done with this file. I'm going to come in here close and yes, save it. So now I'm going to go and uh, detach the button no. And this one, you say no. And I'm going to go and add the surface. We have the shortcuts. I'm going to come into the DB topo. I'm going to say create reference. No, I can't create a bit of this stuff because it's in the file. I can create the reference of the DB topo 01. So say create reference. I'm going to change it here, like from start, just to see visually where, you know, where, where it comes and stuff. I'm going to change it, you know, just, you know, uh, a little bit. I'm not going to change it, you know, back to default. And you're going to see where the surface where it comes, yeah. The surface comes, it comes in Greek coordinates, you know, however, we are supposed to have it in surface coordinates, because, you know, if I paste this stuff on top of, you know, pretty much if I add it to the master, it's in surface, the drag will not work the right way, yeah. So what we are supposed to do at this moment is like, you know, hey, did we forget something? And the thing what you forgot at this moment, it's the scaling, you know, pretty much you are supposed to bring this surface from grid to ground to surface, yeah. So to bring that one, you're gonna have to say, like, hey, I missed a step. I'm supposed to scale the surface in order for it to show up in the right location in surface coordinates. So I'm gonna go here, select the surface. I'm gonna say here, open source drawing. Now, once you open the source drawing, I'm gonna miss it up pretty much. I'm gonna go here to the tool spaces. I'm gonna remove, you know, the snapshot because, you know, I want to rebuild the surface again. So I, I was not done with it. I'm gonna go here to create snapshot. I'm gonna say here, remove. Okay. Let me finish you know, rebuilding the surface. And we're gonna add an extra step to my channel. We're gonna add another editing step to the surface. So I'm gonna take in here this surface. I'm gonna do it here scale. Sorry, I didn't understand. I'm gonna take the surface and I'm gonna say scale. Specify the base point will be zero comma zero, as you know, because this one is scale from zero zero. If you have a centroid scale surface, you don't have to worry about this stuff, you know, or maybe, you know, you, do, you, you might consider it. But if you have a surface with scale from zero, zero, you have to do this step, yeah. Specify this point zero comma zero. The scale factor is what? To get from grid to ground, you have to use the 1.00. So pretty much 1.00011. That was the scale factor from server. Click enter. And the surface is going to go to the right location on surface coordinates. Of course, you're going to see like you know this boundary in here. This is because you know the boundary doesn't move. You know it's already part of the surface, so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. So I'll go here to save, close it. Maybe I should have made the snapshot again. I forgot to make it. You know, just remember to make a snapshot if you need to. I say synchronize. And you see that the surface goes in the right location based on the lidar versus Surf, you know, survey. Yeah. Now, the last step it would be for us to add this surface as a component inside of the master existing surface. You know, so in here, we're gonna go where well, the step in here where we have the shortcuts, we create the data reference. Now, I'm gonna paste this data reference inside of the master existing surface. And to do that one, I'm going to the tool space. I'm gonna go to the master existing surface right here, VBA topo. I will go to edit, right click, the surface. I'm going to paste in here the component like that is zero, 0. That's number one component like that. Click OK. And you're going to see that, you know, it's pasted on, yeah? Now, at this moment, you're going to see that we have two servers on top of each other again. When I have a surface, let me see if it's W. You see, like, you know, I have a surface on the top. This is the DE top one, and I have the thin surface, you know, this one is the mass exit surface. However, we notice something that, you know, is like, you know, hey, it's uh, something off, you know, maybe, maybe it doesn't go for you. But what happens in here, you're gonna see that the LiDAR surface, it's exactly the same as the master surface, you know, in the area of the survey, and that one is not supposed to happen. That means when you paste the surface, the master, the LiDAR surface, the LiDAR surface is supposed to be on the bottom of the survey, so on the top, you know, pretty much the surface, the survey surface, it's always supposed to be on the top, yeah. So imagine you know, the LiDAR surface is supposed only to complement outside of the survey, yeah. So how we're gonna do that one? We're gonna do two spaces. We're gonna say here the matrix surface, matrix surface properties, and I'm gonna go here in the order, draw order, or you know the operation order. And you see, like the first one we added, we added the component survey surface number one, 
And then on top of that one, we pasted the LIDAR surface component number one. Now, when you paste you know, a surface on top of another surface, if they have the same coverage, the top surface is going to overwrite the bottom surface. So because of that one, I said before, this LIDAR surface is supposed only to complement the survey. It's not supposed to override it. So because of that one, when it comes about the order of building or operation, the LIDAR should be supposed to be at the bottom. And the way you know, the order of operation works is from the top down. Yeah? So pretty much we added, you know, we made this step and then this step and so on. Yeah? So because of this step, we're going to just have to swap the order of operation here. Pretty much we make sure you hear that the LIDAR is on the top and then the surface, the service surface is added afterwards. So we'll take here the LIDAR. I'm going to click on the button here to move it to the top. So what you're seeing here is like, you know, we first added the LIDAR surface and on top of it, we added the, surf, you know, the service service, the component one. And once you do the time, I'm going to say here, apply, or, you know, you can say apply, maybe the surface, and click OK. Now, you're going to see that in the area where it's survey, the, surf, the surface is different, yeah, because, you know, this one is more accurate, the survey one. However, outside of the survey, the ladder still stays live, yeah, but, you know, only in the area where there's a survey, the survey overrides the LIDAR one in the mass that is the surface. So for us, what's left is only to make sure that, you know, the component surface, the data reference component surface, doesn't display, you know, pretty much doesn't show contour. So I'm going to take in here the component surface properties, and I'm going to go to the information tab and change from missing contours to default and click OK. And here you go. We have, you know, the master existing surface that's ready to be labeled. It's ready to be like using the design. Yeah. So at this moment, you know, that pretty much making like, start designing is not a big issue. And if you need any, if you get any other surface down the road, you just, you know, add them as components and the master existing surface gets updated, you know. So pretty much the idea is like, you know, the master existing surface is the same one from beginning to the end of the product. You know, it's only that the components inside of the master surface modify as needed. So once this one is done, I can go in here and click save, and I am good to go. And this concludes, you know, the second part of the um, the second, you know, workflow. Yeah, pretty much the generating the LIDAR surface, and then that LIDAR surface is brought in into the, you know, into the mass exit surface, which is a part of the first workflow. And um, we imagine, you know, at the end, you know, you can reuse the this SRDB stop or the project V topo. You're going to use it everywhere where you need, you know, the canvas to display your project, you know, the existing canvas, you know, so in the version control, in the existing dishes plan, in the post start, whatever you need to show existing contours, this is the base file that you know, had to be referenced in the production file and labeled to show the contours and the contours labels and so on. Yeah. Any questions up to this point? Did I cover anything that was needed? We have one more workflow that we can look at, but uh, that one is uh, a workflow that you sometimes you might need, sometimes you might not need. Yeah. So, any questions? If not, we can jump to the last one and then take questions at the end for anything that you know people might have uh, issues with. Okay, so let's go to the last workflow. The last workflow is pretty much generating the 2D version of this one. Because it is like, you know, sometimes, you know, people like some architects or some other stuff, they do not have access to Seal 3D. Now, this one works nice for Seal 3D. As long as you have Seal 3D installed in your machine, you can look at the data. Or maybe if you have an AutoCAD with an object enabler, like pretty much it's a tool from, you know, AutoCAD or this, that provides you to be able to read the data, yeah? But sometimes, you know, you might want, you know, to generate a 2D version of this stuff, you know. So when it comes about generating the 2D version, you're going to need, you know, pretty much you can generate, you know, like uh, text data, or the contour labels, and the uh, contours is polylines, or, you know, like polylines of elevations, yeah. Now, that, that base file we don't use it anywhere. It just uh, is more or less like a transmittal file, you know. If somebody asks you for, for the 2D version of the contours, you can take that, you know, pretty much you can take that file and set it up. Now, to create a 2D version of the counters, you know, you have to know the following. You know, pretty much, you know, you'd expect, you know, for the surface file to be labeled. So, pretty much, you have to expect for all the labels to be on and all the stuff and the counters and so on. So, pretty much, I'm supposed to have more or less like a already labeled master existing file that I can take it to a 2D file, yeah. So, at this moment, I assume that, you know, I have all my labels. Let's go in here, maybe add, you know, labels that need to repeat. I'm not going to say save this one at this moment. So, 
the way Vuitton works is like you can know, create an empty file, you know, from a template, and then in that empty file you're gonna paste, you know, the data to extract from the master existence, existence file. Yeah. So for my purpose in here, I'm gonna say say close this one, and I open the same file. I'm gonna open it again, but I'm gonna open it as read only mode. You know, so I'm gonna modify. So I'm gonna take the little program. Say here open read only. So you're gonna take this file. And if you have to add extra labels because you want to label for somebody, you can go through the process of adding extra labels. I'm going to say add labels in here. And over here, maybe I'm going to change it. Here, I'm going to put it as, um, I'm going to say surface. I'm going to put it here, kind of multiple interval. I'm going to say like maybe add, select the surface, specify the first point. I'm going to say, like, hey, I want to label from this location down to here. And then every 200 feet, you can enter. So the software is going to go through like much, you know, is the same idea, but you know, we did it for the for like labeling, uh, you know, using the line. It's only that now it goes along that line and labels the candles every 200 feet. Yeah, it doesn't label the whole surface, it just labels, you know, based on that line. So if I select it here like this line, you can see like this is from where it started, where it ended, and label those candles every 200 feet. You know, it's like you have, you know, candles in here 647, 646. Now this kind of very individual labels, you know. If you remember in here, we have like you know the the, the this one. And this one, if I modify it, if I move it, you know, it you know you can move around the stuff, you know, move the label, yeah. Is that a is that a revision? Now if I take in here the um, let's see if I take uh not even stuff here, if I take this one, if I take this stuff and make it you know, longer, does it update the labels? Let's see maybe it updates or not, you know, I'm just trying to make sure that you know it works you know that way. You see that, you know, updated stuff, you know, however, it didn't update, you know, the, the every two hundred feet, you know, so this is like, well, if you're using you know, the multiple interval, it's done a single time, it has the contours, and then they become individual contours, right? Hey, this is an individual country. So, at this moment, we have all the labels that you want. Now, before you extract, to extract the data, you're going to make sure that it's a 20 scale, it's already 20 scale, and so on. So, we're going to go through the process of the extracting the data that you need, you know, to send to the, you know, you know to the sultan or who requires the 2D file, yeah. So to extract the data, we're gonna do the following. We're gonna go here to the, um, let's say I'm gonna come in here to the, to the surface. I'm gonna go here to submerge the surface, and then from extract from surface, you have right here surface tool, extract from surface, we're gonna go to the drop down, and we say extract objects. And the first one we're gonna extract from this surface, we're gonna extract in here the major and the minor contours. You click OK. And what happens in here, I extract, you know, we're gonna see that, you know, I extract, you know, 3D power lines, you see, yeah, right in here, I can see the polyline properties. You can see that I extract the polyline of the contour, you know, pretty much it extracts, you know, the polyline of the contour. The next step you need for us would be like to extract, you know, the labels, you know, to extract the labels, I'm going to just, you know, select in here, select senior, pretty much, you know, select all the labels, and then it looks like maybe I select all of them. Yes, I did, I did, I did. And once, and this, because these are still 3D objects, I'm going to have to take them down to 2D objects, yeah? And once they're actually, you know, extracted, I'm going to go here to explode. Take those labels and explode them. Now, at this moment, you know, I'm done with the surface because, you know, I don't need the surface anymore. And I take here the thin surface, and you can either freeze it or delete it and stuff, you know? So this moment, you're going to see that I delete it, and I have the contours and the contour labels. And the contour labels here, you're going to see that, you know, they are like, um, if they are blocks, and I'm able to blocks. So I'm going to go here with the process of selecting all the anonymous blocks. Yes, sec. A block anonymous. Let me see how many do I have enough. Yes, I have 423. I'm going to say here B3. I can watch B3 is a block burst command that you use, you know, for the, that you use for, uh, you know, survey processing. And if I come in here, select, you know, this label, I've got the properties. Now it's an M text. It's a piece of M text. You can see that it has the stuff in here defined as by, you know, stuff. Now I'm going to take in here all the labels again, select similar. I'm going to go through the process of select similar. Properties are all in texted. I'm going to go here to color. I'm going to say here to change it by layer. The layer is going to be like it's fine. Line type, we're going to change it here by layer. So we might change the properties to be by layer. And here this will be by layer. And then line weight by layer. So we might change everything, you know. Maybe the easiest way to do this stuff is to do the following, to say set by layer. Command, say Valer, and I say here all. Yes, 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 and there you go, you have everything in Valer. Now, once all this data, it's you know, extracted, you know, it's good to go. I'm going to go here to select you know, everything. 
I go to properties, make sure there's no like that still 3D objects. So I go on the text and polylines. I'm coming here, copy 00. So I copy the data, I'm going to put them in a new file. So I'm going to go to start, new class templates. I'm going to go to the base files. In the breaks file, I'm going to find for the X project driver V token right there. Yes, I have it. I'm delete the circle. Here, page 00. Driver, and I'm going to say here, save. And I'm going to put, take this one, driver, and drop the P to an X. And there you go, you have the 2D version of the surface. Yeah, now the 2D version, we're not going to use it in production. We never use it in production, we use the 3D version. But it's a file that you can take it, you know, and send it over to whoever needs a 2D version of the surface. However, you have to remember this one, it's in what? It's in, surf, it's in the surface coordinates, yeah, it's ground coordinates. If this one has to move to grid, if somebody is in grid, you have to take, you know, this data, or pretty much you can provide this data to them and tell them to use the scale factor, you know, the 0 0.99989 to bring back to grid. Or you can provide them a grid file, you know, so if you provide the grid file, you have to take all this data and you scale it down, you scale it, you know, you know to you know, scale it to grid by using the inverse factor, and then you can send that file over, you know. But for us, you know, when it comes to the like, you know, design, Everything is done in surface coordinates. Yeah, and for us, you know, some if you use a century, this like a century scale uh, survey or data, the surface most of the time matches, you know, the grid. Yeah, you know, it's, it matches more or less like in the center and not as much as in the sides, but matches the grid. You know, so we don't really need, you know, to use versus grid versus ground. Yeah, but when it comes about data from uh, from uh, the scale from zero to zero zero by using scale factor. You have to pretty much, you know, make sure that, you know, you understand what's grid and what's ground, yeah. And what you provide to, the, you know, to console this one, yeah. So, at this moment, you know, I'm done with the surface, you know, it's good to go. You can always, re you know, regenerate the stuff, you know, say if I, you know, if I make a new version of the surface, I can go to the DB topo in here, you know, extra, do the same steps again, and then delete the data from here and update the data back in, you know. So, pretty much, you know, this one, it can be like, um, pretty much is a, this one is like uh, the contours and the labels at one time, like in, in like one one place in time. However, you can update this stuff as many times as you need because it is, it is, uh, as we have shown, it's easy to generate this type of file. Yeah. So once we stop, I'm gonna come here close and yes, it's good to go. This one, so you know, I modified it, you know, stuff, but I cannot save it because it's read only. We did it on purpose to be read only. You don't want to modify it. I'm gonna say here no, and I'm good to go. And this concludes, you know, the three workflows that we, you know, showed today. The first one was create the surface master surface file. The second one was create, you know, the LiDAR surface file. And the third one was create the 2D version of the master surface file.